Hi friends, I hope everyone's doing well. In past videos, I mentioned that I tend to use the same compositions in my collages. While this can help with developing a style, I believe it can make your art stale as well. I want to present eight basic compositions in this video. For those of you that have started a new art practice, or as a reminder to explore other compositions than the ones you're currently using, that last one applies to me. There are more compositions than these eight. I can make another video showing the other ones if there's interest. The way I want to present this information is to create a collage for each composition. I'll be using my current collage art journal, various collage papers, including the ones that I created in my pattern papers video. I'll link that video in the description area if you haven't watched it and want to take a look. Other supplies are paints, scissors, and a glue stick. So let's get started. Let's start with the horizontal composition. It's a common one that is used by urban sketchers, landscape artists, and photographers, as well as collage artists. I find that having the collage elements exactly in the middle of the substrate isn't as visually pleasing as having it above or below the middle. It's not to say that you can't have a successful horizontal collage that has all the elements in the center, but you'll find that most artists do not use this placement. I have used multiple horizontal lines and filled the whole substrate with horizontal collage elements. It adds an element of detail. For this video, I'll be creating collages with simple designs. If you're new to creating with any of these compositions, I think it's best to start with simple designs. You can work your way up to more detailed designs as you practice these compositions. I believe you can create beautiful collages that are simple. Here are the papers that I pulled. I like to decide on the color palette before pulling papers. It helps to narrow the selection process. Since I pulled more papers than I will use, it helps to have a color palette selected. I'll be painting the ground with Blixmat acrylic paints in yellow bright and green deep. This is an optional step. I have an idea for a ground that I would like to try out. I'll be using these two three quarter inch flat brushes. I applied yellow paint first because I wanted to see what would happen if I painted the green paint overlapping it. I would classify this paint as student grade, so the final look would be different if I used studio grade paint. I decided to add more layers of both colors to get the ground to have more texture and depth. For this collage, I'll be putting the collage element slightly towards the top of the substrate. I'm starting to collage using large pieces of paper because I want to be adding smaller accents on top. I want to make sure the viewer will see some of the base papers underneath the accent papers. You don't necessarily need to use long, narrow papers for horizontal compositions. You can use square shapes like I'm using. It's more about the placement of the papers than the shapes. As I have mentioned previously, it's good to have a variety of sizes and shape papers or elements in your collage to make it visually pleasing. Along with various sizes and shapes, it's good to have light, mid, and dark values. The two base shapes are mid-tone, the dark value is the dark green grid paper, and the light is the security envelope scrap.
I'm adding this bright yellow paper with a green texture to tie in the ground with the collage. This is an optional design choice that you could use. Here's the finished artwork. It has a large horizontal collage composition that is mostly in the upper section of the substrate. Let's go on to the next one. For a vertical composition, you can take the same concept as the horizontal and just flip it vertically. For this collage, I'll cover the whole substrate with vertical elements. I want to show you a different design than I did for the horizontal composition. Here are the papers I pulled for this collage. Once again, I pulled more papers than I will use. Since I'll be covering the whole substrate with paper, I didn't bring out any paint. I want to mention if you're creating in an art journal, do not collage to the gutter of the journal. Closing the journal can damage the papers along the gutter's edge. I like to draw a line either 1 8 or 1 4 inch from the gutter as a way to remind myself to keep the papers to this edge. I'm not going to narrate too much of this section because it's similar to the horizontal composition. As you watch me create this collage, notice that I'm using light, mid, and dark value papers. The papers are in different sizes and shapes, but I'm being literal with the shapes this time around. The shapes are rectangles. I wanted to show you a different design than the horizontal collage. Besides showing you different compositions, I want to show you different designs as well. I hope this will help you when creating collages with these different compositions. One more thing to notice, as with the horizontal collage, I'll be overlapping the elements. This is a way to tie all the elements together in a collage. To break up the light to mid-tone section, I decided to add a sliver of dark red. It helps to balance this section and the collage as a whole. Here's the finished collage. It's balanced and cohesive. 
Next up is diagonal. I would consider it, along with horizontal and vertical, as simple compositions. The collage will go from corner to corner, either left to right or vice versa. I pulled papers in reds, blacks, and grays. I'll be painting the whole ground with Blake's matte acrylic paint and blue light. It will tie in with the light blue numbers on the red paper. I'll be using this three quarter inch flat brush. I like a ground with a slight variation of color, especially if I'm only using one color. I'm starting with this red paper because I want it to go from corner to corner. It's not quite long enough, but I'll add a small section of it to extend it to the other corner. If you're creating a diagonal collage in an art journal or a sketchbook, I would suggest having a pencil on hand. It helps to mark the area of the paper that needs to be cut on an angle, especially near the gutter of the journal. This section will have limited narration as well. I do want to mention that I'll be cutting the papers in various sizes along with various widths and lengths. This diagonal collage will be a literal interpretation. I'm being mindful of not using too many pieces of the red paper. Here's the finished collage. 
The red paper that goes from corner to corner is the main focus. The papers on either side of it are balanced but not exactly the same. The two smaller pieces of the same red paper adds balance without taking attention away from the main red paper that goes from corner to corner. Next, I want to discuss the cruciform or cross composition. If you want a symmetrical collage, you can place the two lines so they're crossed exactly in the middle. I think it's visually pleasing to place the lines off center. Even the intersection is slightly off center. Here are the papers I pulled, encyclopedia pages with text, papers with pinks, red, oranges, and greens. I'm starting with the encyclopedia pages that I'll use as the ground or first layer. No paint will be used for this collage. I'm loosely mapping out where the cruciform will go with the placement of these papers. Since the paper isn't long enough to go from top to bottom on the substrate, I'm cutting this paper where I want the left side of the horizontal section of this cruciform. Also notice that the paper section is placed upside down. I prefer to have ephemera with text placed on the substrate so it isn't easy to read. For the right side, I thought it'd be a nice detail to place the paper sideways. This placement will make it harder to read the text. My goal when using text ephemera is for the viewer to see it as a collage element, not reading material. Again, I left space where I want the right side horizontal section to be. As you can see, it's slightly higher than the left side. As I build this collage, I'm not cutting the papers into a thin cross. I'm using the areas that I mapped out for the cross with the encyclopedia ephemera as a loose guideline. The last step is to add an element to cover the intersection where most of the papers meet. This step isn't necessary, but I thought this collage needed an extra element. The text ephemera around the green paper helped to define the shape. I don't want to call it a focal point. I think it tied all the elements together and made the collage look complete. Here's the finished cruciform collage. The reason I like this composition is that I can envision many variations of it. It can be very structured like a cross, or you can create a very loose collage that will take the viewer a bit to figure out if you use the cruciform composition. 
Next up is symmetrical. This composition is more than having two sides that are mirrored. Yes, you can create a collage with mirrored sides. I usually call it balanced composition because I think it's easier to understand the definition. The two equal sides must be balanced, but don't have to be mirrored. It's easier for me to explain during the collaging section, so let's get into it. Here are the papers I pulled, browns, blues, and a bit of pink. I also brought out Blake's matte acrylic paint and blue violet light for the ground. I'm using the same three quarter inch flat brush. I like this size and one inch flat brushes for painting grounds. These two painted papers will be the main elements for this collage. They are similar enough without being exact. I'm showing you how I create symmetrical collages. I rarely, if ever, create mirrored symmetrical collages. Again, that's why I prefer the term balance instead of symmetrical. I'm putting one paper on top of the next so I can cut both at the same time. This way I can make sure both are the same size. I'm checking to make sure the width of both papers meet in the middle of the page. I like to eyeball it. If you want to be exact, I suggest drawing a light pencil line with a ruler down the middle of the page. To reinforce the symmetry or balance composition, I'm using this loose monoprinted grid paper to glue down the middle. As I review the collage at this early stage, the right side looks a bit darker than the left. To balance the right side, I'm cutting a piece of this light pinkish paper slightly larger than the one for the left side. Also, it's slightly lighter in color than the piece for the left side. I'm using the papers to visually balance the collage. I will continue to do this as I create this collage. For this brown envelope, I'm not cutting the same size or shape for each side. Instead, I'm looking at the previous lightest pinkish papers and almost mimicking those shapes, but in reverse. The long, narrow brown paper mimics the long, narrow pinkish paper. The small rectangle brown paper slightly mimics the small rectangle pinkish paper. I'm balancing these two color papers in size and shape. Now with the blue and white security envelope, I'm not going to mimic any of the existing sizes and shapes. I want a variety of sizes and shapes in this collage. I'm looking at the collage as a whole. The left side can pull light and throw off the balance if I use a large shape of the security envelope. I'm cutting a long narrow piece for the left side. For the right side that can look dark, I'm cutting three small rectangles. For the final two elements, I want to further balance the two sides. On the left side, I'm adding this dark brown paper to make sure it's not looking lighter than the right side. Then on the right side, I don't want to use the dark brown paper because I don't want it to look darker than the left side. Instead, I'm using this mid-tone blue.
Here's the finished collage. I hope you can see that it's balanced or symmetrical without having the two sides exactly the same. Since we just discussed symmetrical composition, let's discuss asymmetrical next. The simple definition is that the elements on either side of the composition are not the same. It's unbalanced. Here are the papers I pulled, purples, yellows, and oranges. I decided to paint the ground with Blix Matte Acrylic Paint and Yellow Oxide. I'll be using two main elements for this simple collage, but you can include more if you would like. The main goal is that each side of the composition is not balanced. I really like this purple paper, so I'll be using it as the main paper for both elements. You don't necessarily need the elements to look the same. I will be cutting the second shape slightly smaller. My plan is to work on the larger element, then work on the smaller one. The reason I'm working in this order is that I want to make sure the larger element is complete, so I can use some or all of the same papers in the smaller one. This is one way of creating an asymmetrical or unbalanced composition. Another option is to only use the purple paper as a smaller element. Also, I'm only using two contain elements. You can certainly cover the whole substrate with multiple elements, but you have to make sure the sides are asymmetrical or unbalanced. I think that's more of an advanced composition. I want to present a simple one in this tutorial. Here's the finished simple asymmetrical or unbalanced composition. It was a conscious decision not to use the light orange paper in the smaller element. It's a subtle way to reinforce this unbalanced composition. The two elements relate to each other, but are not a mirrored image. Radiating is a fun composition to use. All the elements radiate from the central point. You can put the central point exactly in the middle of the substrate, but I prefer to have it off-center. I think it's more visually pleasing. Here are the paper options for this collage. This composition lends itself to using a lot of different color papers. If you do, be mindful of balance and contrast. Also use different widths and lengths. I will be painting the ground with Paper Artsy's Elephant. I brought out this old brush because my plan is to apply the paint in a dry brush method. I found that using old brushes create a good dry brush effects. The ground will mimic the radiating composition. It can be used as a guide to where the central point is located so you know where to put the papers. I'll be using one or more of these encyclopedia images as the central point. This will be the last step. Since the ground was painted in a radiating design, I don't need to have the central point glued down first. By applying the central point last, I can cover any ends of the papers that meet in the central point. Creating a radiating collage in an art journal can be challenging. It's easier to create on a single piece of paper. 
you're not concerned about cutting the edge of the papers near the gutter of the journal, I like to cut a piece of paper close to the size of the finished shape. It's a bit easier to cut down to size. It's good to have a pencil on hand to mark where you need to cut along the gutter. Also, you'll see me fold the papers to get an estimate of the angle of the cut. At this point, I'm gonna add music while you watch me work on this layer of the collage. I'll come back when it's time to add the central element.
I decided to use this image for the central element. It's a dark value with a minimal amount of light to mid tones. Instead of leaving it as is, I'm going to cut it into small triangles in various shapes. At least one point of each triangle will be radiating out from the center. This shape will reinforce the radiating composition. Here's the finished collage. It's more complex than the other collages I've made so far in this tutorial. Another design would be to cut the papers long and straight, not as a sector. The central point can be a circle, square, or a freeform shape. The grid composition is another fun one because you can use many colored papers. Like the radiating composition, it's easier to create on a single piece of paper than in an art journal. You can cut the size of the paper substrate in the exact measurements to fit the grid. The measurements of this page are 5 and 3 quarter inches by 9 inches. The grid I decided to use is 3 across by 4 down. I drew the lines on the page as a guide when gluing the paper to the page. I already cut the papers for the first layer. I will decide on the accent papers after I glue down these papers. Each of these shapes is slightly larger than the size of the individual grid shape. I wanted to leave room in case my measurement is a bit off on the pencil grid. I would rather have the paper slightly larger than too small and have to recut the paper. I'm going to trim the excess paper, then start adding the accent color papers. I like to do this step to give myself a clean work area so I can trim the accent papers to the correct size. Since the first layer shapes have cut edges, I want the accent papers to be torn. It'll add a good contrasting detail to the collage. You can certainly cut the accent papers in straight edges. Other design options are to tear the first layer shapes, then cut the accent papers with straight edges, or tear the edges of the first and accent papers. I'm only having two layers in this collage due to time restraints, but you can certainly add multiple layers. It's an opportunity to add many different color papers. As I decide on the color paper to use, I'm thinking about balancing the colors on the collage as a whole. Also, I want to add contrast as well, a dark accent paper on a light paper and vice versa.
Here's the finished collage. It was a fun one to make. I can see myself making more grid collages in the future. Let's have a short wrap up next. I hope this video was a helpful way to explain these compositions. I created simple collages as examples for each one. You can definitely create more complex collages if you're comfortable with these compositions. There are more compositions that I can share. Let me know if you want another video or two. It might be better to split up the remaining compositions in two videos instead of one long one. Let me know which format you prefer. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I know it was a long video. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.